Triangles have a variety of different centers, each with an assortment of properties that connect various concepts in geometry. And they can get pretty complicated pretty quickly, but if you take the time to really understand them, you can start making these connections between different concepts and some of the stuff can really start to click. Three of the centers, the centers of interest of this video, are the centroid, the circumcenter, and the orthocenter. And there was a famous mathematician named Leonard Euler, and he determined that these three centers are collinear for all triangles. And the line that contains all three of these is aptly called Euler's line. The purpose of this video is not just to see that these points are collinear, but to really understand why they're collinear. And we're also going to review a lot of different concepts as we go along. So to do this, let's start with a triangle that already has these three centers constructed. And in an effort to restrict some information to only what we need for this proof, I've hidden all of the lines that I use to construct the centers. But you can see as I move this around that the centers have been properly constructed. So I'll bring in certain lines as we use them. The other important points that we need to start off with are the midpoints of each side of the triangle. Here they're labeled E, F, and G. So let's begin. First, we're going to construct the medial triangle, which connects the midpoints of the larger triangle. And let's review some of the properties of a medial triangle. First, the sides of the medial triangle are called midsegments. And midsegments connect the midpoints of two sides of a triangle. And through the midsegment theorem, we know that in each of these segments is not only parallel to the third side of the triangle, but it is also half the length of this third side. And since each of these midsegments has that half the length relationship with each side of the larger triangle, then we can use the side 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 similarity theorem to prove that a triangle is always similar to its medial triangle. And the length ratio is always going to be 2 to 1. So now we're going to construct a line that contains one of the altitudes of the larger triangle. Note that it goes through the orthocenter, which is better because all altitudes go through the orthocenter. So as we know, the altitude intersects the side of the triangle at a right angle. And we're going to just show that here, because that's going to be important later. Next, we're going to construct the perpendicular bisector that goes through point E. Note that it goes through the circumcenter, which is better, because all perpendicular bisectors go through the circumcenter. Since it is a perpendicular bisector, it also intersects this side at a right angle, so let's mark that too. And now, since we see that both of these lines intersect this segment at a right angle, then that means they must be parallel. That's going to be key later. So now, the next thing we're going to do is construct segment BE, which is a median of a triangle, because it connects the vertex of a triangle to its opposite midpoint and we see how it passes through the centroid. And it better, because all medians intersect at the centroid. So if we remember our properties about the centroid, we know that it's always positioned two-thirds of the distance from the vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So in other words, if we look at these two segments, they're always in a two-to-one length ratio. And now I'm going to unveil the plan to proving the existence of Euler's line. And it's basically that we need to prove that these two triangles are similar, and we're going to use the side angle side similarity theorem, so that we can then show that these two angles are congruent, and then play around to find out that this has to be a line. So in order to prove that these two triangles are similar, we're going to use the side angle side similarity theorem. And this 2 to 1 ratio is going to be the first side that we're going to use. Next, we're going to use the median as a transversal intersecting our parallel lines. And these two angles are alternate interior angles, so we know that they must be congruent. 
So there's the angle for our side angle side similarity theorem. And finally, we're going to compare the lengths of these final segments. Here we can see the segment connects the vertex of the larger triangle to its orthocenter. So how can we find that corresponding segment in the medial triangle? So let's review another relationship between a triangle and its medial triangle. First here we're going to construct the circumcenter of the larger triangle, which is the point of concurrency of the perpendicular bisectors. Now, since the sides of the larger triangle are parallel to the sides of the medial triangle, that means that these perpendicular bisectors also intersect the sides of the medial triangle at a right angle. And since the vertices of the medial triangle are also the midpoints of the larger triangle, that means that each perpendicular bisector of the larger triangle must contain an altitude of the medial triangle. And what is it called? What's that point where all the altitudes intersect in a triangle? Well, that's an orthocenter. So that means that the circumcenter of the larger triangle is also the orthocenter of the medial triangle. So that could be important as we're trying to find a corresponding segment in the medial triangle for our proof. So let's look back at our triangle. Again, this segment connects the vertex of a larger triangle to its orthocenter. And if we look down here, this segment connects the corresponding vertex. Because remember, with similar triangles, you always have to find the corresponding vertex. So we found the corresponding vertex of the medial triangle, and this segment connects that to its orthocenter, which again happens to be the circumcenter of the larger triangle. So that means that since a triangle is always similar to its medial triangle, then this segment has to be in a certain proportion with this segment, since they're corresponding. And we know that this length ratio of a triangle to its medial triangle is 2 to 1, so the length ratio of these two segments, these two corresponding segments, must also be 2 to 1. So now we have our second side, which is in the same proportion as our first side. And now we have the final piece of information to prove that these two triangles are similar. So once we know that they're similar, we can conclude that these two corresponding angles are congruent. And now, if we take a look at the lines that form these angles, or the sides of the angles, if we look at this one, we constructed BE. We know that it's a line segment. So that means that these two angles are supplementary. And since we've just proven that these two angles are congruent, then it means that these two angles are supplementary. So what do we call supplementary adjacent angles? A linear pair, which means that this must be a line. And we've done it. We found the evidence to prove that the centroid, the circumcenter, and the orthocenter must be collinear.